Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to take a look at getting Amiga games to run on the SNES Classic. Now, this, I'm going to come right out and say it, this is a very difficult process. So, um, if you're really interested in Amiga, if this was like your system back in the day, and you cannot live without it on your SNES Classic, then by all means, here we go. But there's going to be a lot to this tutorial. Q Clark on Reddit did an excellent written tutorial that I will link in my description um, that I've been going off to try and get this to work. And the reason I'm doing this, I've been getting people asking me if I could do a tutorial to clarify some things and make it a little bit easier to get it done. So that's why we are here. Specifically, I've had Echelon2k8, Jay Goddard, and Strike Light from Hatchy Resources request this specific tutorial. So a couple things you're going to need for this are the BIOS files. There are four BIOS files that you're going to have to find and download. I'll show you how to search for those. Honestly, it, those were easy to find. The games were harder for me to find than the BIOS files, but I got the BIOS files. You're going to need the HMOD associated with Amiga games. Notepad++. It has to be Notepad++. You can't use Notepad to do what we're going to do later. FileZilla so that you can move the BIOSes to your Super Nintendo or you can use the BIOS installer. A program called ADF Opus. And of course the WHD games for the Amiga. And also the QClart files that he has so generously made. Um, a WHD load file and some template files that we will need for this. A couple things that you have to know about before we get started. Do not use linked export. Also, you cannot compress anything. Do not compress these games or the files that we will be adding to HackG because that will mess this process up. The first thing you have to do with your four BIOS files, you have to rename them to the names that you see here on your screen. They have to be renamed correctly exactly as you see them right here. Or again, this will not work. So make sure you do that first. All right, so what I've done, I've taken all the files necessary and I put them in one folder to make this really easy to follow. Um, we have our three games here. I picked Shadow of the Beast, Lotus 2, and Body Blows because I noticed that some people requested those in, uh, on Reddit and things like that. So we have our games. We have our Kickstart files here, unnamed. I put them in this folder here with the correct names. We have QClart's files to make this as simple as possible. And these three folders right here are just these games unzipped. So you have the info in the folder, info in folder, info in folder. So what we need to do first is take this Kick31 ROM. We have to add this as a BIOS. I'm going to use FileZilla for this. So once we have FileZilla open, and to get the information for this, you just simply go to Hackchi, your tools, and you're going to look up this information here. It's going to be root for the username, clover for the password. Right here is the host address. And these last numbers right here are going to be your port. So over on this side of FileZilla, I've already navigated to our Amiga folder where all of our stuff is. So we're going to go to the Amiga BIOS folder. This right here, Kick31, is what we need to move over. The folder we're putting it in is etc, libretro, and then system. All we have to do is right click and upload and it'll add it to our system. So we are done with this for now. We're going to need it again later. So for now, close down FileZilla. Back in our Amiga folder, we're going to go to this SNES C folder, which is the WH load and things like that, that Q Clark has made for us. To configure this file, we have to use a program called ADF Opus, which it will be in my description for you guys. It's going to look something like this. When you open it up, it's going to have a file system here. So all you have to do is navigate again to the Amiga folder where those BIOS files are. So let's see, users, my folder, desktop, Amiga, Amiga BIOS, okay. So now what we need to do is open up that WHD file. You just hit this open icon right here. You're gonna navigate to that file. Amiga, WHD load HDF, open that up. And you'll get another file system that looks like this. What we need to do is go into this devs folder, then kickstarts. These three files, not this top one here, don't put this in there. You need to highlight these three, drag them into this folder, and copy them over. So if we go over here, let's see, we have 34005. Yep, we have this one. We, we've copied all three. Now, once you X out of all these, 
you're done. This file is now ready to be added as a BIOS. You won't have to do anything with it ever again. So the first part is done, getting these BIOS files over onto this SNES Classic. That's half the work. So again, back in FileZilla, we're gonna go back to our WHD load file. And then on this side, etc, libretro, system, we're just gonna drag that over. Now our BIOS files are added. They are where we need them to be and they are configured the way that we need them configured. So now we have to install the core so that these games will run correctly. Once you've hacked your Super Nintendo using the easy installer or by going to HackGResources.com and downloading HackGCE, the newest version of RetroArk, and the PUAE core, I believe is what it's called. It's going to look something like this, PUAE. What you have to do is go to Modules, Install Lecture Modules. You're going to drag that core into this box right here. After you do that, it'll be added to the list. If for some reason that doesn't work, if you go to your HackG2 folder and then user underscore mods folder, put it in there, it should be added to the list that way as well. So once you have it added to your list, make sure the box is checked over here. You're going to hit OK. Once you hit OK, a bar will appear. And once it's filled up all the way, it means the core is installed and ready to be used. So our core is installed. Our BIOSes are configured and installed and ready to go. Next, we have to change the game so they will work with this core. So let's start with Shadow of the Beast. We're going to go into the Shadow of the Beast folder. And then inside this folder, one more time, you're going to find this slave file. We have to rename this to game.slave. Just like that, all lowercase. We'll do the same for the other two games. Lotus 2. And Body Blows. I haven't played any of these games. I mean, I, I tested them a little bit just to make sure this was working. But as for actually getting into the games, I have not done that. So all three games are changed correctly game.slave on all three. That's very important, you have to do that. Now after you change the names, you have to make note of the folder size of each game. So Shadow of the Beast, let's hit our properties. It is 1.7 megabytes. So Shadow of the Beast, make a note of whichever folder you're using at once. So Shadow Beast 1.7, we're gonna use that as an example. Shadow of the Beast, 1.7. So now we have to use that program one more time, the ADF Opus program. We're gonna navigate to our Shadow of the Beast folder. So, users, me, desktop, Amiga, Shadow of the Beast, and in this folder right here where we changed that game name. You're gonna click this icon right here. It's a new icon, so we click that. Click the Browse button. We're going to navigate back to that Shadow of the Beast folder. We're going to go right here. The file name, just name it something uh, simple like Shadow of the Beast. SOTB dot HDF. Save as type is going to be a hard disk file. Then click Save. Make sure hard file is checked right here. Now this is why you had to note how big the folder size was. You have to change this number so it is greater than the folder size number. So since it was 1.70, we're gonna make this two megabytes. Click this open after creating box, then click create. And now we have our file right here. What you need to do with this file is take all these items, drag them into this file. So it looks like this. This is our new file here. Once you X out, that file will be saved right here. So this is our game file. So part two is completed of what we need to do to get these games to run. We have our BIOSes where they need to be, and we have our game set up the way it needs to be. The last step is to create a config file, and that's where the templates come in. So we have to back out, go back to where our templates are. We're going to use this one right here, the OCS.UAE. Make a copy of this. I'm going to go back again, back to Shadow of the Beast, we're going to paste it here. Rename this the same as you named your HDF file. So it's going to be Shadow of the Beast UAE. Right click it. We're going to edit with Notepad++. That's why we needed Notepad++. Regular Notepad won't work. Other programs may work, but this will definitely work, so make sure you get this. Right here at the bottom is what we need to change. First thing we need to do is take out this game. We're going to rename that to whatever our HDF file was, so SOTB. 
this path to your game we're going to change in a second once we know what the path is going to be. But first thing we have to do is make sure that is changed. If you don't change that name, when you go to add these files to Hackgy, it's going to create the same folder over and over and it's going to keep overwriting your games. You have to change that first, then save it up here. So now it'll act like this is its brand new game. You have to change that every time. Finally, here we are. We get to use Hackchi. So now we're going to add that game to Hackchi. What we're going to do, we're going to take this UAE file. We're going to drag it over to this games. Don't worry about this pop-up. Just close that box. So here we go, Shadow of the Beast. Next we have to do is change the command line for this. I believe UAE works, but if you want something to definitely work, put P-U-A-E. So our command line has changed. Let's change our name. Shadow of the Beast Amiga. We will Google our box art. That could be Amiga. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know anything about Amiga. But we got our box art. We have a command line changed. So here's going to be our folder, the CLVVJOIJF. We're going to close Hackchi down. So all that stuff saved. We're going to open up our Hackchi folder. So we're going to our Hackchi folder games underscore SNES. Now we have to find that folder that was just created. J-O-I-J-F. Here we are and here is the UAE file. What we need to do, open up our Amiga folder, move it over here, go back into our Shadow of the Beast, drag this HDF file over so it's copied into your game folder. Last thing we have to do, open up this UAE folder again with Notepad++. So now we know where the path is. Since we're doing this on the NAND, you have to take this part out. You do slash VAR slash games slash and then we're going to do whatever the folder name is. It's always going to be CLV dash V dash J O I J F. So what this is doing, it's telling the core, this is a location of that HDF file. So it knows to combine the two files so they will run correctly. Make sure you save upon exiting Notepad++. So if everything worked the way it's supposed to, we should be able to go to our SNES Classic and have these games run. So I went ahead, I already got the box art and I changed the command line for the other two games. So we have Body Blows, Lotus 2, and Shadow of the Beast Amiga. So if everything went correctly, these games should finally load now. So let's head over to our SNES Classic and take a look at the Amiga games. All right, so here we are at our SNES Classic with Body Blows, the Amiga version. Let's take a look. There we go, Body Blows. Have the fight of your life. All right, so we have some guys to choose from. Um, but first, if you hit the Start key, you get a virtual keyboard. I don't know why you'd use that because I, I don't know. If you hit the Y button, you get a main menu. Hitting the select button here will enable or disable the mouse. So like right now, I disabled it. If I hit select, now I can enable it again. I don't know what any of this stuff is. I don't know if this has to do with the emulator or if you could do this back on the Amiga back in the day, but it's there. So anyway, and when I did that, that disabled my controls. So let's go back and fix those again. Controls, move, move, retro pad, BBB, get out, hit start again. All right. Um, Ye2, okay, we'll be Ye2 real quick. We'll do a quick, quick fight here. We have two other games to take a look at. We don't want to spend too much time. Versus Ninja. Is this wrestling? I thought it said this was wrestling. Maybe not. Oh, it's just regular fighting. Okay. So, oh, okay. Well, I didn't. Wait, how come I can't attack? What are the. Maybe I. Oh, there we go. Okay. Ooh, I hear this stereo. I don't know what's going on with this, to be honest. I don't know how this controls. The A button seems to do some things sometimes. This score isn't going to be perfect. Um, the emulation for this isn't great. So, okay. That was Body Blows. 
We have a couple more games to look at. I don't want to spend too much time on one game. Uh, what else do we have? Excuse me. Turbo. Lotus 2 something. Lotus Turbo Challenge 2. Let's just hit buttons really fast. Maybe we can get into this quicker. I hear something on the left side. Oh, hey. All right. I like this stereo. So this must be an options menu where you can choose players, gears, accelerate. Uh, is that an automatic? That must be automatic. Accelerate. I don't know. Can control is fine. And this should open the game probably. I guess we'll be the forest course. We're ply one, ply one. Player one. I know. I know it's player one. If anything, I would get this chord just for the music on this game. Oh, here we go. So it's like Outrun, I think. Oh, get out of my way. So we're in fourth place? Or is that fourth gear? That's probably fourth gear. Oh boy. Yeah, you can tell this is where the sound gets kind of funky. Oh crap, okay. So this must use a checkpoint base system. How come there's no music now? Maybe that's just a problem with the emulator. I don't know if there's supposed to be music now or not. But that you can tell, I don't know. The sound is kind of funky here. It's actually going left to right in my ears here. But yeah, there's some popping in the sound. Again, this this core is not perfect. So you're going to have things like that. Ooh! Well, this doesn't seem too bad. I'm not crashing. All right? Okay. Okay. Excuse me, car. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. No. Thank oh, checkpoint. So, okay, there you go. That was Lotus Turbo something or other. And Shadow of the Beast. I've actually heard of this game. I think this has been ported to a bunch of other systems too. All right, so we good? We're ready to go into this game? Oh, uh, yeah, see the sound on this one's a bit, a bit more than, than normal. Oh, finally, okay, look at this. As the mist clears, the eerie image of a fort, never mind, we skipped it. Uh, welcome. We are a cool little demon guy. We're not going to go in that well because I was tricked by it. There's a locked door at the bottom. Oh, hey. Hi, guy. So you just I, you just walk and punch things. Is from what, uh, you know, from what I've gathered, that's this game. I didn't know you could break these in the beginning to gain your health back. That is very good to know. Apparently 12 is as far as we can go on that, so that seems like a waste at the beginning there. Yeah, the sound is kind of funny. We have these orbs that shoot. I guess you have to take a hit there. I'm not sure. We have more orbs we can take out. No problem. We are a little demon goat guy. We must be pretty strong, I would think. I don't know. No idea what this game is about. I just like the art style. like the sound direction. It'd be nice to hear it more clearly, but again, that's probably just how the emulator is right now. Oh, what do we have here? A statue? Let's take out the... Oh, no! One hit, though. One hit. And that's it. Those games seem to run really well. So, like I said, I know this is a pretty advanced tutorial. There's a whole lot of steps in it. But if you're a huge fan of the Amiga, then I recommend giving this a shot. Um, if you're just curious, um, I hope this tutorial helped a little bit and made things a little more clear because like I said the ones I've seen before are kind of all over the place so hopefully this was direct to the point um, if you got any problems or if you have any questions feel free to get me on the Hatchy Resources Discord I can help you out there and yeah so there you go Amiga tutorial for the SNES Classic I hope it was helpful thank you to everybody who made requests for this here you go so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time guys if you want to contact me outside of youtube feel free to use any of these social media platforms also while you're here why don't you check out some of the other videos that i put out and if you feel like it subscribe to the channel